As the country continues to battle power cuts, South Africans are losing hope on the government's ability to come up with long-term solutions. President Cyril Ramaphosa has promised that his administration is working hard to end the load-shedding crisis, but has failed to mention time frames. For more on this, I'm joined by Dr. Tuma Mangisa, who is the director of Dr. Cam Leadership and HR Consulting. Dr. Mangisa, I appreciate you coming on to the show today. Now, in that very statement, we're all losing hope. Is there light at the end of the proverbial tunnel of ESCOM? Uh, well, uh, thank you, Hugo, uh, for the opportunity and uh, uh, happy new year to you and uh, the viewers uh, of uh, Newsroom Africa. Uh, well, uh, there may be hope at the end of the tunnel. However, uh, the load shedding phenomenon, uh, it appears to be very perennial. It appears to be taking uh, quite, a, quite a long time. And uh, in my personal opinion, uh, we just have to accept it. It's still going to continue uh, because there seems to be no effective leadership uh, in as far as I'm concerned uh, around solving the current problem. Now, at what point is that leadership? Are we talking about the, the head of the various SOEs? Uh, are we talking about the chief executive of, of ESCOM? Are we talking about uh, the ANC government? Who are we talking about when we discuss, when we describe that leadership that is lacking? Well, 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 well it's quite broad, uh, if, if, you are, if you will allow me to talk about it. Uh, not long ago, uh, you hear uh, Minister you know, of Minerals, Mr. Mr. Gwede Mantashe, not talking so kindly you know, to the Minister Pravin Godan of Public Enterprises. Mm. Now, uh, you you would expect uh, that uh, the two, there's a symbiosis between the two ministers because one is responsible for the SOEs and uh, the other one, Gwede Mandashe, is responsible for, min I mean, for, for, for minerals and partly energy. So uh, the lack of leadership, you know, that I'm referring to here, it is between both of them because there's supposed to be symbiosis between the two of them so that uh, we can be rest assured and safe, you know, as citizens of this country how this matter is going to be resolved. However, it goes bigger than that. Uh, if I was, you know, the president, you know, uh, the honorable president, uh, you know, uh, Madame Mela Ramaphosa, this is the person who is supposed to be saying this pet between the two of you ministers. I don't want to hear about it. Uh, you know, that's decisive leadership, that's effective leadership. You should be saying all what I want from both of you. It is the end of load shedding. However, it passes on. But do they, do they have capacity? I mean, you talk about these two individuals, and now we know that um, certain SOEs are being taken away from uh, Pravin Gordon, if you, if, if you will, uh, such as ESCOM, which will now fall under energy, and that's what's been recommended um, at the ANC's uh, 55th conference. Well, well, well uh, it goes, it's, it's actually broader than that. You know, it's not only leadership. Uh, you know, you look at the question of strategy, uh, you look at the question of systems, uh, processes, uh, people at the center, of course, uh, you look at the question of, uh, uh, yeah, leadership. Uh, but as I'm saying, uh, also culture is a problem uh, in terms of how things are being done at ESCOM. We have had, you know, the pilfering, you know, that's taking place there, the stealing, uh, and so forth and so forth. But however, you know, the loss of uh, the critical skills, the engineers that uh, we are talking about here, uh, it is as a result, amongst other things, of the challenge as why we're facing load shedding currently. Well, there's Andre de Reuter who leaves at the end of March, right? And then we can count on these fingers and some of yours, the uh, CEOs of ESCOM over the last uh, 15, 20 years. Now, there's been a challenge because the government has not been able to identify the one individual who can take uh, ESCOM out of its current challenges. But the buck has obviously got to stop with someone. Who should it stop with? Uh, well, uh, uh, the, the CEO, uh, the CEO uh, is uh, the best person uh, to begin to direct uh, the operation and the strategy uh, of ESCOM. Uh, unfortunately, it has not been uh, what we are looking for as citizens uh, when uh, Andrew de Reiter began, you know, to drive the ship. Uh, it goes even beyond that. Uh, the board of directors, 
we, we still wonder today as to what were the key performance areas, what were the indicators, you know, that would indicate that indeed performance uh, is achieved. This is what we're looking for, you know, from an end, you know, the but, but we keep we keep firing CEOs. We keep changing the boards of ESCOM, right? Should we not be changing the person who's head of the ministry that's in charge of ESCO? Uh, partly. Uh, partly that is the issue. Uh, but broadly, you know, when you do your SWOT analysis, you will then realize, you know, that, uh, you know, governance is a challenge. Uh, leadership is a challenge. And management is a challenge. Beyond that, as I was saying, you know, they must look at the systems. They must look at the, you know, processes. They must look at, you know, the, you know, uh, and all these other things, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, Professor uh, Fred Nicholas is talking about in his model, you know, uh, that defines what are the elements of the organization. You know, seven elements. If you look at those elements, then they will be able to ponder and investigate and detect what actually the problem is within ESCO. It does not only rest on the leaders, but it becomes an ecosystem. Yeah, but you know what? I think, excuse me, but I think we're being, we're being theoretical. Because we've, we've got a government um, that's been running this country for 28 years and are seemingly failing to find the right individuals to run ESCOM. So it can't be about systems. Those systems are implemented by, by individuals. Correct. Right? So who's the, who's the final accounting officer? Because there is someone who's appointing uh, the CEO to ESCOM. There is someone who's appointing the board to ESCOM. Yes. You know, the bug stops with the president uh, at the end of the day. Uh, who must make sure that the citizens of the country have got electricity. Uh, though, though the, de I mean, the, the powers, he has delegated those powers, you know, to the minister, Minister Gwedeman, as far as, you know, the energy is concerned. But at the end of the day, the president uh, must take the lead, uh, you know, make people account to him as to when uh, we're going to see an end of this load shedding. And apparently, it looks like we don't have such. Well, the president said we're increasing the amount of renewable energy on the grid. Now, you and I know, and you will verify, that this is a long-term process. Correct? So, obviously, we don't expect for ESCOM's problems to go away in the next 12 months, certainly not before the next election, do we? Of course. Uh, it then becomes a, a challenge uh, that uh, we are being promised, you know, of uh, green energy. As we have rightfully said, you know, you go. Uh, this is a long-term strategy. It's not going to help us, you know, now. However, you know, the board and the CEO of ESCO, and together with the employees, uh, particularly, you know, they discuss in critical skills. They have to make sure, you know, that uh, there is an end to this load shedding. But the CEO, whoever they appoint, they must appoint a person uh, who is fit to the purpose in as far as the skills, in as far as the experience is concerned, in as far as, you know, education is concerned. That's what we want. Now, before I let you go, are they looking to recruit internally? Do they hire somebody who's currently with ESCOM? Do they hire somebody who's been with ESCOM before? Do they go across the borders to find someone who will resuscitate the problems that we're having? Certainly that we go down from the current uh, stage three or stage four, Lurch, and can't really keep track of, of where we are uh, in the next few months. Uh, fortunately, the country uh, does not have a shortage you know, of skilled engineers. Uh, there is no need to go outside the borders of this country to look for an effective, you know, CEO who can begin to run uh, the ESCO in the manner in which business and the citizens but one, appreciate. But, but one would argue, I mean, how many CEOs of ESCOM can you count in the last uh, 15 years? It, it's, it's a question of how do you recruit, how do you acquire, you know, what is it that you are looking for when you are recruiting those kinds of CEO? But internally, of course, we have capable people who must be given a chance and opportunity to begin to lead, you know, ESCO. Dr. Mangisa, appreciate your time this afternoon. Dr. Tuma Mangisa, who is the director of Dr. Cam Leadership and HR Consulting, talking to us about load shedding and whether or not it will end in 2023.